You've heard of Summerween and reading a bunch of horror, thriller, mystery novels in July to capture a glimpse of a major holiday. Well, I personally find that my life is spooky scary enough with the daily horrors that is an average mundane life. So I thought, hmm, what's a holiday that I can capture right now in July? Well, why not? Christmas in July. So I thought, hmm, I want some books that really can capture the essence of where I live now, which is hotter than Hades, Texas in the middle of July. Some of the contenders we have here are Cowboy Boots for Christmas by Carolyn Brown. The genre that really kind of captured my interest was the witch Christmas genre. I think that is um, something we're gonna really look into. This one is A Witch for Mr. Holiday, Witches of Christmas Grove, book one. And I don't remember if it's book two or book three that's A Witch for Mr. Frost, but like, I, I am like any other modern woman living in this day and age of book talk. I am also a sucker for an evil guy romance, okay? I found this one. And I don't know if this is a holiday book, but this this will be read by me, okay? And it's Cupcakes for My Orc Enemy, Sweet Monster Treats. Where I'm reading that. I maybe not in this one, but I'll be reading that soon. There's Christmas at the the Christmas Lodge. We'll see. And then I found this one and because um on Kindle, it like would show you the top books for this one was holiday fiction I was and the number one book was this book called the Mats Matza Ball. I went to my library and I picked it up. Here it is. And yes, I have already read it. Rachel Rubenstein Goldblatt is a nice Jewish girl with a shameful secret. She loves Christmas. For a decade, she's hidden her career as a Christmas romance novelist from her family. I, I just stopped reading after that and then I got in my car and I went and I got this. Jeez, let this Christmas thing go. I knew we had time for one last misunderstanding. I knew it. She just needed one more. Rachel Rubenstein Goldblatt stared at the collection of miniature Christmas figures spread across her desk. She owned 236 of the smiling porcelain Santas from the world-famous Holiday Dreams collection. When her best friend Mickey arrived, she would complete the collection with the addition of the coveted Margaritaville Santa. Oh, the Margaritaville Santa. How she had dreamed of the day when the tiny porcelain Santa in a Hawaiian shirt and wearing Ray-Ban sunglasses would sit atop her prized collection. Rachel had scoured eBay for the tiny limited edition figurine, set up price alerts, and left frantic, somewhat drunken message <laughs> post at three in the morning on collector blogs. Now, after six years, five months, and seven days of hunting, the Margaritaville Santa would finally be hers. The anxiety was killing her. That is just so funny. I'm sorry. That is hilarious. This is also this author's debut book. I enjoyed this book, okay? I thought it was really good. It's a solid debut. Now, keeping in mind, though, both of the characters in this are supposed to be 30, and they simply do not act like they are in their 30s. Now, who am I to judge? But this is also a PG novel. At, um, but there is one line in it where I was like, oh, this man is not acting very PG right now. What he really wanted to say was, you deserve it. You deserve to feel good. Rachel, you deserve to be pleasured. Oh my God. Hello. I really liked the character of Rachel and I almost felt like I would have been way more interested if the romance in this book had come like tertiary or secondary to whatever her primary, uh, life stuff going on was because she had an incredibly interesting professional and personal life outside of the romance that I thought was just and and she was just also such a great character I mean that whole just first couple of words about her and her Santa Claus obsession is 
hilarious. And she does so many things throughout this book that I'm like, you, you're, you're a, you're a gold star girl. Okay. You're, you're funny. I, I can see her like having her own like Nancy Drew-esque type series. Not that that, like, not that the character was interested in solving mysteries or anything like that, but I'm just saying that it was a solid character. If I come across Jean Meltzer's second novel, it's called Mr. Perfect on Paper. Yeah, coming in 2022. Perhaps I will pick it up because this is a really, this was a quick and easy read. It was fun. I mean, besides like the weirdness of like the romance, which I, I don't read a lot of romance books these days. I guess you could say I'm a serious kind of woman now. I mean, it's a solid, it was a solid opening. All these other books are going to have a hard time living up to this because this was pretty fun. Okay, so we already hit kind of a little snag in that <laughs> I didn't realize that Kindle Unlimited is different from Prime Reading. I did realize that, but as I was looking at Kindle Unlimited, I thought I was looking at Prime Reading, so I did just get the 30-day free trial. So we are about to witch it Christmas it up in here because I am going to get the use out of this free trial and I am going to remember to cancel it if I want to cancel it. Let's get started on reading A Witch for Mr. Holiday. I am unreasonably excited about this. I just started A Witch for Mr. Holiday and can I just say the exposition that has gone on in just the 1% of that what I have read is insane. Listen to this. She just got a package, right? And her friend's like, no way, what if it's a puppy? You can't leave it there for a month. Ilsa? Ilsa grabs the package and shook it gently. Holly rolled her eyes, it's not a puppy, you have no patience. True. Ilsa winked at her friend, my impulse is control. My impulse control is non-existent. Speaking of impulse control, did you see the new guy in town? He's gorgeous. I might have accidentally on purpose grabbed his ass in the grocery store this morning. Which, consent, Ilsa. You mean Rex Holiday? Holiday asked, trying to ignore the sick, jealous feeling in her stomach. Did you, um, ask him out? She asked, her eyebrows raised in a challenging glint in her eye. Holly narrowed her eyes at her friend. You know, don't you? Ilsa threw her head back and laughed. Who doesn't know? That lust spell is the talk of the town. Thank you. Jumping right into the plot. I'm so sorry. I did forget to say that I will simply be watching The Bachelorette today. I simply do have to keep up with, um, charities finding love and I need her to find love. I am simply invested in this. So I will also be watching that right now. This is the haul portion of the video. I got my friends some gifts. This is mac and cheese. I got this one also for my friend. It's a chicken. It's a little cow for myself. Come on, look at him. This is kind of more Valentine's Day theme. And then these look like peppermint. But honestly, while we're here, I did, I did go to the library. We have Motherland, writings by Irish American women about mothers and daughters. And then I also have a uh, Sylvia Plath restored edition of Ariel, a, a facsimile of Plath's manuscript reinstating her original selection and arrangement. And then I also have uh, the unabridged journals of Sylvia Plath. Moving right along. The Christmas Witch. A wit sorry. That is not the title. That is definitely Aubrey Plaza's book. A Witch for Mr. Holiday. I really wanted to like this book. I really did. I really, really, really wanted to like this book. The story could have taken place not at Christmas and not with witches and everything about this story would be the exact same. Um, the conflict, there was like, at one point there was this misunderstanding that could have been juicy and good, you know, and like emotions could have been high. Um, but instead it was resolved within two pages, which felt silly. Honestly, this felt like a very straightforward romance. <laughs> not that I was looking for like angsty Christmas, but I don't know. Give me some bruja. Give me some, give me some witchy woo woo. I don't want to spoil it. I mean, I don't know guys. I mean, if you're looking for a witch Christmas romance book, maybe this one isn't for you. There was like a lot of Harry Potter references. Like there's this like single mom whose name is Lily and her daughter, and excuse me, her son's name is Evan. And then at one point the sentence went Lily comma Evan. And I was like, we get it we get it i see it and then i think she and then the main girl was a redhead and i'm sorry maybe it's because i'm a brunette and i'm insecure but i like 
whenever I am reading something and the main character is a redhead and that is kind of her defining character trait, I'm looking, I'm looking at you, Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, and what's that one by Colleen Hoover? Oh my god, I don't remember the name of it. But basically, because I'm an insecure brunette, whenever I see and or I read female lead red hair, I think I'm checked out now, you know? Something about redheads. Something about redheaded main characters in my books that I, in my romance books, I say no, I say nay. I almost forgot to mention, like, the most, the most important thing about this book that really turned me off in it his the guy's sister rex mr rex holiday a witch for mr holiday mr rex holiday if you will the male lead his sister comes to town and he like immediately like drops everything and goes and finds her right and i'm sorry but he called his sister babe and then baby girl and i'm not gonna go back and look i don't want to put that much research into this but i do not recall him calling the female lead either of those pet names and then afterwards he called the female lead babe and i was like no you just can't you cannot call your sister and your partner your romantic interest the same the same like little pet nickname that is i don't know that gave me the ick i did not i did not like him after that i thought oh you don't have mm, i almost wanted her to get with the other guy because that was giving me more that was giving me more he was giving me he was giving me desperation anyways maybe this is just to say that i need to be reading a different i need to be reading one of those books where the guys have to grovel you know i read one of those one time but the thing is is they never grovel the right way you know anyways on to the rest of the festivities for Christmas in July. Christmas in July, right? I'm really excited to send these to my friends. So I guess we end it here. Thank you for joining me on this holiday. Um, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Yeah. Tune in next time to see what kind of bookish chaos I could get into. You know? Thanks. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh yeah. Can you um, subscribe as well?